Astrophotography can be a humbling experience, and sometimes you have to admit defeat. Last year, I captured an image I'm not proud of, but the time has come to redeem myself. It is almost winter, it is very cold out there, but I am absolutely jacked up about my latest astro project. This is a deep sky object I absolutely love, but the last time I photographed it, I royally screwed up and it was a nightmare to process. If you're a deep sky astrophotographer, I'm sure that you too have been in this position before. No amount of reprocessing can save you from the mistakes you made during the planning and acquisition stages. The object in question is the Tadpoles Nebula in Oraga, and when I screwed it up, it wasn't totally my fault. It was one of the first projects I captured from the Black Dog Observatory when I finally got it up and running. I was super excited to be capturing data from my new permanent setup. The problem was, it wasn't dialed in yet. I was using the SkyX software for the first time, and more importantly, a sophisticated telescope mount that was slightly above my skill level. Man, I spent hours on that T-point model. Anyway, long story short, the tracking was off and I captured images with oblong stars. Anxious to share some sort of progress from the black dog, I just pretended I didn't see them. I kind of forgot that this is what had happened until I went to reprocess the image earlier this week. I thought I could just be a little more strict on the subs I chose to stack and produce a clean image of the tadpoles. Not possible. Every frame just looked a little bit off and there was no saving this project. A complete redo. Oh, and I only collected about 45 minutes of total exposure time through the O3 filter arguably the most important wavelength of light to capture for this target. So tonight's the night to finish what I started, or to start over. A fresh start. I will capture the tadpoles of IC410, the letter Y cluster, using narrowband filters in the Hubble Power. But there is one catch. I have to do it all in one night because the weather forecast is atrocious. It's been cloudy for three weeks leading up to this point and they return tomorrow, a typical Canadian December. But that's okay because now I get to geek out over the planning of capturing every ounce of quality data I can in this limited window of clear sky time that I have. Let's hop into Stellarium and I'll show you what I mean. There he is. Are you planning on doing any astrophotography over the holidays? I don't know, it depends how cold it is. Here's a look at my backyard sky, the way it will look a little later on here in Stellarium, and I can get a projected view of the exact framing and size of my deep sky target using the camera and telescope I have running in the backyard. Okay, let's advance time a little bit. There we go. Okay, you can see Auriga rising in the east over here. And the target I want to shoot is the Tadpoles Nebula here, or the letter Y cluster as it's labeled here in Solarium. We can get a good idea for the exact framing by using the sensor tool here. And I already have it set to an APS-C size sensor, a crop sensor, and then my Radian 75 telescope which is at a focal length of 405 millimeters. So this is the exact framing uh, that I should get of this target. So you can see I'm, I've got it well covered and I could even do a mosaic to include the Flaming Star Nebula if I wanted nearby. It's a really fascinating region. I'll probably see the Spider Nebula in my image as well. It'll just be a matter of getting the rotation matched up nicely. I'll show you when and where the moon will be coming up because that's good information to know. So as we progress through time here, look, we're almost at eight o'clock. Um, Orion's coming out, a lot of great uh, winter targets. And then right around 10.30, I believe, yeah, here we are at 10.37. 
and you can see the moon in Leo coming up. So at that time, Auraga and my target will be nice and high in the sky. There's a nice distance between my target and the moon, which is great news. As you know, with certain narrowband filters, you can almost completely block out that moonlight, but certain ones aren't so good at it, like that O3 filter. So it's smart to time out when you're shooting through each filter, depending on where your object is in the sky and how close it is to the moon. So for example, tonight, when my object is still low on the light dome towards the city, I'll shoot with that H-alpha filter to cut a lot of that out. After it gets a little higher, I'll shoot with that O3 filter to get that important signal in O3 before the moon is out, but after it's a little higher in the sky. And then I'll round out the session with some S2. Essentially, my best data will come when the object is high enough in apparent altitude to clear a lot of the turbulence in the air, but before that moon comes out. An interesting tidbit of information about my location. If you hear loud bangs or sounds of birds of prey going off over speakers behind me, it's because we are surrounded by vineyards and they're growing grapes for ice wine, which should be being harvested any day now because I'm told they need to be at minus eight degrees Celsius before harvesting. So maybe I'll have to pick some up. Because this is my only night to shoot, I'll have to make do with whatever I get. Ideally, I would collect like six or seven hours on this target thanks to these longer winter nights. But of course, we'll have to see how this weather holds up as I see in the forecast now some high clouds rolling in just before midnight. It better be some good ice wine for all this noise. It's like a cannon going off. Hopefully you're not getting sick of seeing me use this rig. I've been using it religiously for the last five months. It's not so much that it's better than any of the other cameras and telescopes I have. It's that it's all set up and ready to go at all times. That makes a big difference in the winter. It also features the ASI Air, which allows me to control the session from in the house, which is always nice. Well, the garage anyway. When I get in the house, it loses signal, but you know what, I'll take it. Say what you want about us little refractor shooters, but this is a high mileage system that sees very few nights off. This is my deep sky astro machine and it's quickly becoming one of my most used telescope setups of all time. I've taken so many pictures on this. Here's a little garage update for any of you interested. I haven't really done much in here. There's, I have a grand plan for the way I wanna organize the storage in here and be able to put things away and close off doors. So it's probably gonna require a, a custom builder to come in and, and design something for this space, but I really wanna get it done and I think it'll be worth it. So I just kinda of have the telescopes up shoved against the wall there and uh, you know some cool drawers for filters and uh, makeshift storage for now. I, I'm really not happy with the way it is right now. It's kind of the way I had it in the last garage. The worst problem with this room, as you can probably hear, is the sound. It's just bouncing off the walls and this tiled floor. So I need to do something to help soundproof this room, uh, whether it's like a DIY kind of solution or some you know, affordable Amazon sound blankets or something. So if you guys have any ideas on that, I'd love to hear it in the comments. Here's my um, makeshift workstation for when I'm working from home. We still do go into the office, but it's nice to be able to work from home too. Uh, this desk is really cool with the, the undermount lighting. It comes in all these cool colors and obviously red is my favorite, but this widescreen monitor is really great for editing YouTube videos. So for any uh, YouTube creators that are watching, I highly recommend getting an ultra widescreen monitor if you use Premiere or really any of the video editing software tools. Uh, this spot over here, just something I kind of threw together, just a, a you know a portable folding table. Uh, but this is just where I come if I need to set anything down as I'm on my way out the, the back garage door here. So the thing about this room is it's heated through heated floors, which is you know what a luxury that is. It's awesome. But at the same time, it also means that I don't want to leave this door open for very long in the winter because it just comes, the wind just comes rushing in through here and it gets cold in a hurry. And then I'm you know, going through a lot of that natural gas to, to run the boiler, to heat these floors again, to get it back up to the temperature it was. So figuring this spot out now, I, you know, I really love this space. I, I'm so happy to have it, but there's still so much work to do.
My camera and telescope are firing away now and the sub exposures look mm, not so good. There's some passing high clouds now. They're just kind of rolling through. I'll get a better understanding of how good each shot is when I bring the images into Deep Sky Stacker tomorrow morning. I use the image scoring feature in Deep Sky Stacker to compare the number of stars, the sky brightness, and the overall clarity of each image. Based on these conditions, it looks like I'll be dumping at least half of my exposures due to high clouds. If you want more information on the scoring feature in Deep Sky Stacker and comparing your individual sub exposures and seeing which ones are worth stacking and which ones aren't, feel free to check out my premium image processing guide I've left in the description. It's okay to go back and redo an object you've already captured before. I do it all the time, probably a little too much. Most guys that have been doing astro for as long as I have are now discovering faint nebulae on 24 inch remote telescopes. And I'm out here shooting the horse head for the 30th time. But you guys know me by now. I'm in it for this. These nights in the backyard and the garage. Staying up late, watching my subs roll in, and admiring the darker sky I have in this backyard. I hope you guys have been getting out to shoot and that you're taking time to reflect on your progress and why you chose this hobby. I hope you enjoy my new and improved image of the Tadpoles Nebula, and as always, clear skies.